Today on Rappler, the Philippines' ranking improves in a global corruption survey at the height of the administration's worst corruption crisis. <laughs> Senator Santiago will deliver her privilege speech Wednesday. Senator Enrile says he's ready for her attacks. And tensions in Thailand ease as police pull down barricades and allow protesters into government headquarters. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The Philippines' ranking rises in a global corruption survey at a time when the Aquino administration faces its worst corruption crisis. Transparency International ranks countries based on how corrupt their public sectors perceived to be. The higher the score, the higher the rank. A score of zero means a country's very corrupt, while a score of 100 means it's very clean. The Philippines scores 36, a rise from its score of 34 the previous year. Its rank goes up to 94 in the Corruption Perceptions Index for 2013, a rise of 11 spots from rank 105 in 2012. The Philippines' performance comes in the middle of protests over the pork barrel, discretionary funds that became a source of corruption. The scam involves lawmakers siphoning their funds to fake non-governmental organizations of alleged scam mastermind Janet Limnopoulos in exchange for hefty kickbacks. Under the index, Afghanistan, North Korea, and Somalia rank as the world's most corrupt countries, while Denmark and New Zealand are the least corrupt. The Berlin-based nonprofit group says none of the 177 countries surveyed this year received a perfect score. Senate Minority Leader Juan Ponce Enrile says he will show up for the privileged speech of rival Senator Miriam Sanchago on Wednesday. A day before the speech, Enrile tells reporters he is ready for Sanchago's personal attacks. Ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, ipinako ko sa gumbota. <laughs> so, what will make you... O kaya baka sinasasabi niya ako bumarin ko yung isang. <laughs> On November 27, Enrile delivered a scathing privileged speech against Santiago, calling her a, quote, inane, obsessive hater for a litany of charges against him, including masterminding the pork barrel scam and of being a murderer. Santiago's Wednesday speech will be a rare appearance for the senator, who's on sick leave since July. Enrile says he will no longer fire back at Santiago for the sake of the Senate. A day after appointing former Senator Ping Lakson the rehabilitation star, President Benigno Aquino defends his choice, calling him, in his words, a no-nonsense person. The president met with Lakson in Malacanang on November 29th, where they discussed the former senator's functions in his new role. Aquino picked Lakson to oversee the government's rehabilitation program for areas devastated by Super Typhoon Yolanda, international name Haiyan. Aquino says having one person fully focused on relief efforts would speed up recovery. He adds, having Ping Lakson at the center, wherein he's a no-nonsense guy focused solely on Yolanda's rehabilitation, will undoubtedly achieve the target sooner. Lakson says he will ensure transparency in the use of funds. The Philippines received 21.12 billion pesos or $482.74 million in pledged foreign assistance as of Tuesday. Yolanda, the most powerful typhoon to make landfall, killed 5,680 people, left thousands homeless, and flattened entire towns and cities. Lakson says he hopes to accomplish the job by June 2016, the end of the term of the Aquino administration. After a tough year for the Philippines, President Aquino has a simple Christmas wish. He said he wishes for no more disasters of the same magnitude as Yolanda. His administration's crisis management skills, skills were severely tested. In September, rebels clashed with government troops in the siege of Zamboanga. This was followed by a 7.9 magnitude earthquake that struck Bohol in October. A month later, Super Typhoon devastated central Philippines. In a media forum Tuesday, Aquino says, 
I hope this book of problems ends this year. Hopefully, there are no more challenges of this magnitude this coming year. The series of disasters makes 2013 Aquino's most difficult year so far. The government faced constant criticism in its handling of calamities, reflected by the drop in the president's satisfaction ratings. Aquino also thanks his cabinet for being, in his words, self-starters and advocates. The government releases an additional 3.38 billion pesos to relocate informal settlers from Metro Manila's danger areas. The additional amount will cover the development of 3,086 housing lots and housing units. President Aquino earlier unveiled plans to move 20,000 families living near Metro Manila waterways as part of the national government's flood control master plan. Budget Secretary Butch Abad says moving the families would avoid potential loss of lives caused by flooding. President Aquino is still uncertain about his stand on gay marriage, saying he's not sure if it will be good for children to have same-sex parents. In a media forum Tuesday, Aquino shares his reservations about gay couples adopting children. He says, I still have to look at it from the child's perspective. Is that something that is desirable in an environment for a child? His stance is the same as his original opinion two years ago at the Asia Society Forum in New York. In the predominantly Catholic Philippines, no bill on same-sex marriage has been filed in Congress. The Catholic Church staunchly opposes same-sex marriages. After a weekend of violent conflict in Thailand, tensions ease after police pull down barricades and allow protesters to enter government headquarters. On Tuesday, the police announces it will stop using force to defend their Bangkok headquarters. They allow demonstrators to approach the perimeter fence of government house and enter the police building where protesters shook hands with officers. Earlier on Monday, police used rubber bullets, tear gas, and water cannons against rock-throwing protesters, all who want to oust Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawatra and replace the government with a People's Council. In her first televised address since the protest, Ying Lak says protest leaders' demands that she resign are unconstitutional. She also says the government is open to, quote, every option to restore peace. The protests are the latest unrest since royalist generals ousted Ying Lak's brother, Takshin Chinawatra, in a coup seven years ago. The violence alarms the international community, with the United States saying it's concerned about the loss of life. UN Chief Ban Ki-moon also urges all parties to exercise restraint. On Monday, the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, tells Filipinos in Thailand to stay home. The DFA also advises Filipinos against non-essential travel to the country. The Commission on Fil Filipinos Overseas estimates over 14,900 Filipinos live in Thailand. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, United Nations Human Rights Chief Navi Pillai says evidence of war crimes in Syria implicates President Bashar al-Assad. Pillai says a UN commission investigating human rights violations in Syria has, quote, produced massive evidence of very serious crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity. It's the first time evidence by a UN commission directly implicated al-Assad. The commission also says the rebels fighting the regime are guilty of war crimes. At number nine, a study reveals differences in the wiring of male and female brains, with women's brains wired for social skills and memory, making them better at multitasking. Brain scans show women's brains connected more across the left and right hemispheres, which are associated with logical and intuitive thinking. The Guardian reports the findings seem to support old stereotypes that men's brains are more wired for perception and coordination. And at number 10, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos reveals plans to use octocopter mini drones to fly small packages to consumers in just 30 minutes. The U.S. retail giant's ambitious project still requires safety testing and approval, but Bezos says Amazon Prime Air would be running within four to five years. A demo video shows the tiny robotic devices picking up packages and whizzing through the air to deliver the items to customers. The mini drones, powered by electric motors, use GPS coordinates to drop the items at the target locations. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. 
Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our viewers and our readers the most emotionally. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meters. If you take a look today, we have one of today's stories, President Aquino on gay marriage, is it good for their children? Interestingly enough, 20% uh, amused, 13% sad, 52% angry. Um, the story that's gotten the most number of votes is this one uh, on entertainment. And Curtis says, sorry for slapping John Lloyd and others. What is a strange irony. It's gotten the most number of votes, but the votes are 57% don't care. Connected to that story, you've got the prank on Ann Curtis, not me, says Jake Cuenca. 70% don't care. So again, a lot of interest, but it says, skews today's mood navigator to say most people don't care. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, December 3, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.